Hey, hello there, folks. It's me, RGB from RJBTV. And yeah, we got some 458 against Gensei starting right here, right now. I hope you're ready for this one because this is going to be a good one. This is from the prime time years of these two players and their activity. This is from the middle of 2020, somewhere in May of 2020. And this is a replay I have avoided for a very long time. A series of games I have avoided for quite a long time. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because some of the games here are very, very, very long. Very long. So yeah, this is going to be quite a series to bite into and digest. It's going to take us a while to get through this. But with Minchel here, Gensei, here on the name... That's some letters and a barcode mixed together into one. Then we have 458 there on the bottom of the map on the red Protoss. Of course, 458 is on the Protoss. The race that he has mastered, the race he represents, the race he is the ultimate Gosu on. I wouldn't say the ultimate Gosu. He's not, I would say, not better than perhaps Brain and maybe some other players, but he is definitely up there among the elite on Protoss. His playstyle is difficult to deal with. No matter who you are, I've seen everyone lose to 458. Everyone. I've also seen a lot of players defeat him, but really I've seen more people lose to him than, than I've seen people beat his Protoss. So yeah, he is the guy to look out for, or used to be the guy to look out for. Allegedly, 4 of 8 is no longer around. So, yeah, every single game with 4 of 8 from the last video I did 4 of 8 is going to be a video, a cast in memory of 4 of 8. So we have Minjil here, Gensei, who also is kind of in, you know, he's... Hmm. Maybe it's too personal to say this, but I've said it before in another cast. He is... He went to prison? For stealing a lot of money from people? So... He's also no longer around in StarCraft. But he was a very good player, and I really just like how good he played StarCraft. So even though he is... I don't know, in prison for criminal acts pertaining to the stealing of money... I'm still going to cast his games, but I'm no longer going to be looking up to him as much as I used to, because when you steal a lot of money from people, he, yeah, you kind of lose my respect. You kind of lose my respect a lot, but he's a very good player. And I think his skill as a player and the fact that he has committed criminal acts are two separate things. But I do very much hold it against him that he did that. I do hold it against him a lot. Anyway. Yeah, so some zealots made their way through because 4 of 8 went for Double Gateway Nexus, which is more a Protoss against Terranbol order. But as we can see, Gensei wasn't really expecting that 4 of 8 went for Double Gateway into a Nexus because most of the time we see a Nexus into Triple Gateway from a Protoss against a Zerg here on the Korean map. So yeah, it does force him to build a lot of Zerklings because he simply wasn't expecting it. He delayed everything by a tiny little bit. And I wouldn't say he paid the price because he didn't lose any drones, but having to build this many Zerklings definitely hurts your growth as a player into a bigger, stronger Zerg. But on the plus side, because 4 of 8 went for double gateway at the start, he is also slowing down his own economy, or the progression of his economy, in favor of some early damage. And he went for a very fast double gas there at the bottom. Now all we need is for Gensei to scout this base, but he might not know. He might... Actually, he went in there. Like, we can see the path of the Overlord. It went in there, it saw everything, it saw the cannon warping in, and then it decided to move away. It also had to move away because there is a cyber core, and if you keep your Overlord in the base while there is a cyber core, it kind of invites the Protoss to go one Dragoon to kill your Overlord. And honestly, losing your Overlord this early as a Zerg hurts you more than it hurts the Protoss to give away information and reveal the fact that they spent some money, some money and some gas on a Dragoon. 
So keeping the Overlord alive is honestly more important. That's why he's using a Zerkling to scout the base instead of the Overlord, because the Overlord just has so much more value than a Zerkling. Because an Overlord doesn't just cost you 100 minerals, it also gives you supply space, you lose the supply space, you might get blocked and slowed down by like 24 seconds, and that actually really hurts. Because against the Protoss, in Zerk against Protoss, time is the most important resource you have as a Zerg. You gotta give yourself as much time. You gotta be exactly on time. So there's two things. You gotta be exactly on time and you have to buy time. And that's why he has this choke point here to buy himself time. He's gonna block those Zealots from getting in, but the Zealots are getting micro and they still get in, but they take a lot of damage They're from the Sunkens, but they do eventually arrive in the backside where we have the Zerglings again on the way and some Hylisks. So he only has five hatchlings at the moment in total, which is not ideal. You would prefer to have six hatchlings at this point in the game. But he is forced to go for fast Hylisks because we have a pretty fast robotics out there from 458. And he can see the robotics, actually. He can see the shuttle finishing up, right? Oh, actually, he, he does know it's there. He just cannot see it because the is just outside of range. And yeah, the robotics can see the Zerkling, but the Zerkling cannot see the robotics at the moment. So he actually doesn't exactly know when the shuttle left the robotics. He was waiting for the Reaver to leave, because the Reaver spawns on this side, which is in vision of the Zerkling. And that would confirm for him that the shuttle can now start flying to my base. But so he's, he's on time with everything. Minchel Gensei here is on time with everything. He's got a couple Hylodisks there to defend. He's got vision all around his base with Zerklings. He might get Burrow later on as well to Burrow these Zerklings so that they don't get killed like this. But the Zealot there might just kill them before he can even get Burrow. So he's getting Overlord speed, getting Hylodisk range. You always get Hylodisk speed in 1 versus 1 before you get a range because a shuttle will have shuttle speed. If the shuttle flies into your base with shuttle speed and you have range but no speed on the Hylodisks, your Hylodisk can simply not kill or catch the shuttle. So you get Hylodisk speed first so you can chase down the shuttle or at least catch it as it flies in. So he flies out, he's going to do some Reaver Shuttle Micro there. And yeah, the Reaver doesn't really do as much as he would have liked to. The Zealots go down, he's gonna try again, but the Reaver ooh, loses the Reaver Shuttle. Definitely not worth it, he shouldn't have tried. He got way too greedy there, and that actually hurts him way more than just the cost of the Shuttle, because he lost the Reaver. But it also means that right now, Gensei knows that 458 does not have a Shuttle anywhere on the map. And that gives him the room to get more drones and a couple more hydrolytics without being pressured by anything. There's literally nothing that can attack him right now. I mean, these elves are sitting there in the front of his base. They can attack, but they won't. They won't. Not until there is a shuttle. So the shuttle there comes out. It's gonna maybe shuttle one reaver to the front or... Oh wait, he's gonna wait for a second and a third shuttle. He's going to attack the front with these Zealots, or he's going to try to kill these Hylodus on the side. Looks like that is what he's going to do. He's going to try to clear out the side, but we have vision everywhere with these Overlords and Zerklings. He's going to fly right into the Hylodisks. Oh, really good catch. That is really smart play there from, from, uh, from Gensei. He saw the shuttle leave with his Overlord. Got Overlord right there, Overlord here. The Overlord speed upgrade this early into the game allows him to get a lot of vision all around a 458 base. And 458 will have to push these Overlords away in order to stop Minchel, Gensei, from sniping those shuttles. But the Scourges are already on the way and bam, snipe another shuttle and another one. This is what makes Gensei so extremely good. This is what makes him so good. His awareness and his ability to find opportunities or create them and deny opportunities for the opponent to attack is just on a level of its own. When Gensei plays a good game, he looks like the best player. Even better than Brain, I'm saying it right now. When he has a good game, he looks better than every single other player on fast map. That's how good Gensei was on fast map. So yeah, he's go oh, okay, that's not the best idea. 
But at least he checks the front, he sees what's there. So he gets information, but it does cost him seven highlights. He could have sent him one of them instead of six or seven of them. Now he's going for an overlord drop because he finished transportation at overlord speed. And 4 5 eight turns around just on time, which means that Gen Gensei decides not to go for it. If he's too many cannons, sees that his reavers, he decides not to go for it. And we've got the Scourge coming in and both the shuttles will get taken down. Oh, beautifully played. That very fast Spire immediately after the lair has helped him out so much. He hasn't really droned up that much. He's still only on 41 drones. He could have droned up much, much more. What matters more is... Wait, is this fake? Oh, it's real. It's real. It's a real drop. I should have checked earlier. So it loads in the middle of the base. And actually... I like, oh, he burrows something down there as well, but it's within range of the cannon. He gets a surrounder on the cannons in the front. That was a really good move. I do think 4 of 8 will survive this one, though, because he got Zealots and Reavers there in the back, and cannons protecting as well. The Reavers are going to be the bread and butter of his defense. It's going to be almost on the storm. Nope, he doesn't have storm uh, temple or energy upgrade. Reavers spawning or dying. This is definitely going very well for Gensei. Much better than I thought. So instead of going for a bigger economy, he decided to just make high risks for a couple of rounds, neglect his economy, and just focus on having a lot of units to storm into 4 of 8's base. And it's working out perfectly. But 4 of 8 still has a Reaver in the back. So Reaver on the way, and Zealot's being built, but he's keeping in the back. He's building cannons in between his gateways to just try and build a buffer zone. And what is happening, Gensei is actually not sending the rest of his units. He's keeping some Hylus back at home because he's fearing a shuttle drop with a reaver to kill his drones. He is keeping that in mind. So he's keeping some Hylus back at home while building up and getting bigger and stronger. Now focusing on his economy while he is destroying Fort of Eight's base. But because he stopped sending Hylus, Fort of Eight successfully defends because he had a lot of cannons. Zealots with, I believe, level 1 shield upgrade. Once again, 4 of 8 always gets shield upgrade first, and I absolutely hate it, but he loves it, but I hate it. Orders are not spinning, he's focusing on the defense with all of his attention. But yeah, he survives the attack because Gensei didn't decide to all in. He just used the time he had to go bigger and stronger instead. And 54 drones is a pretty healthy amount. It's a little bit low for 12 minutes of the game. But honestly, he has demolished and destroyed 4 of 8's base. 4 of 8 has to focus on defending. Lost a lot of Robo, so the Mother Robo is there on the way on the other side. He lost a lot of structures, a lot of gateways and cannons, a lot of units. He's just sitting back for now and playing defense. Got more scourges coming across the map before the cannons finish up to take down the shuttles yet again. Shuttles are trying to escape, and they do escape. They both took some damage, but they both also stayed alive. Very close call. Very, very close call. So Mingo there keeping the Scourges there on the right side of the base. While well, gateways are warping in. And he's using this time to really get bigger, stronger, and richer. He's got a lot of lurkers around his hive. Those drones are somewhat protected. I must admit, though, that I do not like that he put those lurkers so close together. You would preferably space them out a little bit more. Because right now, if, for example, a storm happens on a drone, the lurkers will die through the storm as well. I mean, it does take two storms to kill a lurker, though. Because a storm does 112 damage, the well, lurkers will survive one storm, but two, they will die. Also, if 4 of 8 were to go for a big reaver drop, the splash damage on the reavers would still hurt the lurkers when they hit the, the hive. The scarabs will kill the lurkers all the way around. So spacing them out just a little bit more would be a little bit better than putting them all this close together. But the plus side of having them this close together is that if something unloads here, all the lurkers will immediately shoot on whatever unloads within their range, and it will immediately die. If the lurkers are more spread out, there is a chance something will survive if it unloads very close to the hive. There's always plus sides and downsides to however you place your lurkers. Keep that in mind. So he's got a pretty good choke. It's not a lot of sunkens. It's like four sunkens. It's not a lot. 
but at this point into the game that is enough because he has a lot of production going on got a lot of units has upgrades on two attack zero carapace he's got triple evil chamber carapace level one is almost finished up dropped it on the bottom corner gets surrounded immediately he's gonna try to fly this one single reaver into the drones crawls closer drones run away shoots it's low and the low does, ex does it explode it does not explode gets stuck right there Cannot pass through. We have a small little frontal attack, and now that it, the fact that it's only eight sunkens does allow his attack to kill a couple of sunkens because there's not enough damage front loaded on the zealots. But you know, support units coming in from the back, who's in the front are focusing on the hatchery, which will not go down. They get saved by the zerglings, which currently have level one carapace, which just finished. Zealots are on zero one zero. He's getting every single upgrade there on. Actually, he only has double forge, so he can't get armor at the same time. This was very good. Ooh, what did he use it on? Let me see. Where is the parasite? Wait, what did he parasite? He parasited something, but I don't know what he parasited. Oh, the observer. Okay, that's, that's actually pretty smart. Putting parasite on the observer, he always will have vision. Even if these overlords get pushed away, this will always reveal information in favor of Gansei. Pretty smart move. So yeah, Forfeit is really focused on building up, getting stronger, fortifying himself, because he knows he is not in the best position. So he will need to build a very strong defense, because with a very strong defense, he can keep throwing out attacks without having to worry too much about immediately dying to a counterattack. Okay, a lot, a lot of mutas there move to the bottom side. Scourge are cleaning out the bottom corner there. We've got a frontal attack there coming from 458. And actually, this is a pretty strong fighting force. Triple Reaver, they're in the front. Dragoon's fighting forward, pushing forward. Now, the Reavers do have a little problem attacking into this position because they do crawl into sunken range. But the Sunkens have been killed. Sports on the scene. Courses are killing whatever they can, pushing the overalls away, taking away vision. The Mulders are going to morph into Guardians soon. Actually, is he just going to attack with them? I'm not sure if I approve of this move. The courses are moving back home. Goes for an attack there on the Nexus. Will the Nexus take a lot of damage or just a little bit? You know what? That's actually pretty good damage. He's doing a lot of damage to that one. Like, he just needs two more... Oh, drop comes in. Oh no, there's one high Templar. Can it do the trick? It, oh no, it dies just before it can hit anything. Also a load of couple of reefs on the bottom corner to distract. Courses are coming to kill air units. Yeah, Gensei just needs one more attack, just like the previous one, to kill the Nexus. But I think that now... I think Forfeit will put probably a Templar right there. Drop comes in over the front side. There's nothing inside though, they're all empty. He's just opening up supply space for now. There's a drop at the bottom. Mr. Reaver gonna kill the Zergling. He's gonna wait here on the bottom corner for a little while. Or is he gonna go in? Uh, he's gonna try to fight his way in there. Did not succeed. Templar cannot storm. It's within range, but it cannot storm. The drones were also running to safety, so yeah, the drones were out of range. Even if he stormed, he would have missed. The Copper Guardians in the sky will have one carapace, one attack. Hylas on one three already. He has very good upgrades. The, the goons are on zero to one. Four by eight is doing a pretty bad job with his upgrades in this game specifically. Drop comes in over the bottom side. This one might actually hit. There's a lot of units there unloading. Uh, this reavers in. Oh, he fight runs right into the reavers. Scarab shoots. Scarab explodes. Kills about twenty. Pretty pretty good hit. It's not a lot, but killing twenty when your economy is this low. He's got forty one minerals. Killing any drones at this, po at this point in the game. When there's 30 drones or so on the gas, that's great. Which means there's only like 25 drones mining minerals. That's very, very little income. Which means that 458 actually might have a chance to kill Gensei right here. Because, oh, that plague just saved the game. The plague just saved his life. Literally every single Dragoon in his entire pile of Dragoons got plagued. And I think that saved his life. Also, the Devourers have done a pretty good job against the Corsair, which have two shield, one attack. 
He gets very deep into the base, supply is very low, has to build more drones. He's on 63 drones, which is not enough. It's definitely not enough when you're forced to produce non-stop against a Protoss that is sending and sending waves of units your way. Now, I do think that Forvate might have built way too many Corsairs, so he doesn't mind losing them, because he simply has too many of them. You do not want to have more than, I'd say, 6 to 12 Corsairs at any point in the game. Like, if you go beyond 12, you are in trouble, because that is a lot of supply that can only fight against air units that cannot help you against ground units, and plus Corsairs cannot help you kill someone. They do not really have any killing damage, they just kill air units. They do not kill ground units or structures on the ground. So yeah, they are good, but they do have a limited value, a limited role. Templar is walking into the deaths. Forvet is focused on other things. Sent in a drop. The drop is more important than the storms on the front. The Dark Swarm protects the front. He's down 75 drones. His economy is healthy, but still recovering because everything is still getting up to speed with their mining. Drop goes in. Plague on the Corsairs. The loading zealots. Where's the High Templar? The High Templar probably. Nope, there's the High Templar. It dies before it can storm. The High Templar are loaded right there next to the sunken. Lurkers were like, oh, no, you're not. You're not gonna storm right now. You're dead meat. And yeah, he was dead meat. He was dead immediately. One course from the top corner. Course is returning back home. A triple defiler in the front. No sunkmans, no spores. His technology buildings are quite exposed, I would say. Like, if Orvate breaks through, he could kill all of this pretty quickly with Dragoons and Reavers. But first of all, there's a lot going on. Course on the bottom, flying in, getting information. There's no drop at the moment. Drop it on the bottom, though. It hasn't got... There's a drop. I was wrong. Drop flies in. Course we're distracting this fake drop. But now comes the real drop. The sides do not go in just yet. Wants to distract just a little bit more. There he goes. Got three high Templars along the zealots. Templars along in the bottom side. Gonna storm on those drones. Drones do get hit and he loses all the drones. Loses every single drone that he had on the mineral. So now he has to pull drones from the gas. Which means he can no longer afford expensive gas units. He has a lot of them though, like a lot of lurkers in the front that will keep him alive. He has dark swarms, he has zerkings for consume, he's got great upgrades, 2, 3. Four is on 0 to 1, 21 minutes in, his upgrades are terrible. Gensei's upgrades are keeping him alive, even though he should be dying right now because his economy is terrible. Absolutely terrible, he's got the worst economy so far in this game and one of the worst I've ever seen in my life. But he's, you know, recovering, slowly recovering the economy, putting more drones to work, creating more jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. We need jobs, and he's building them right as we speak. Also needs sunkens to protect the front. A lot of drop comes in, so we get sniped. The High Templars are alive, but they get killed immediately. Having no armor upgrades kills them very quickly, because level 3 attack on the Hylas and the Lurkers. So now back to 32 drones. More lurkers move to the front because the Reavers are using the Dark Swarm against him. And they do die, they do die. But one supply counts are kind of the same. 458 has to produce way more units. Model dropper on the bottom, a single shuttle, ready to dive into the action. His highlights in between. More drones are spawning now back to 39. It goes in. Okay, everything died. The shuttle wasn't too little HP to survive. So it dies very quickly. Got the one Dragoon on the top there, sitting there, just standing there, menacing, looking at us. Look at him, look at him. All alone on the top side. It's attacking nothing, doing nothing, just standing there. Can you actually see that one? Yeah, you can see that one. And this can see no Look at this. This one Dragoon sees nothing. Just out of range. Look at this. Just out of range. It's kind of, it's kind of weird that it's exactly not seeing anything at all. So, we had a little blockade there in Forhavate's base, blocking his units from leaving. Kills the blockade. He's now almost on 032. We'll start 
He just started his armor upgrade, so it's still gonna take about another six, seven minutes before his armor upgrades are where they should be. Dodges the drop, barely though, very close call. A couple more strokes coming down there on the gas, he's very low on gas. That's a lot of Zerglings, the Zerglings are great against Dragoons. Not so much against Reavers and Storms, but there's no Reavers or Storms in the mix at the moment. We have Storm for drops, 4 of 8 has a lot of probes. He could honestly kill like 11 to 12 probes. And his economy would still be completely fine because at some point you kind of hit the the limit of how many minerals you can mine at any given time. So great plague yet again there on the dragoons and the reavers. Reavers are destroying the lurkers and the zerglings, but the plague is in turn doing just enough to make these units easy to kill there in the front. He's pushing cannons slowly towards his choke point to give him a stronger and stronger position in holding Gensei back, but also give him a stronger position to push, because every single time units push forward like this, the cannons will support him in killing those Zerglings or Hylodus or whatever else there is. Of course, on the top still pushing overwards away, trying to deny vision. The less vision Gensei has, the more opportunities for drops for it will have from different angles. This time around though, comes over the bottom side there, flies right on in there, drones from to the bottom side. Yeah, he, he decides not to unload. He decides not to unload because the drones are too far away, the templars will die, so he decides to go for another drop, another day, another time. So pretty smart move to preserve, because it keeps the pressure up on Gensei. And he's just hanging there within the vision, which means that Gensei has to always keep his eye out on this drop. It can move at any point in time. And once again, he has a lot of Corsairs. I would say about 12 to 14, a couple too many, in my opinion. Comes over the top yet again. Gensei has to run away right about now. Runs away to safety. And the Templar are loaded at the top. Picks it up, but it dies anyway to Hylodisk and Scourges. Yeah, keeps his drones alive. Now back to 70 drones. He's managed to survive these very economically troubling times. Although well, Lurk is on the high ground, very annoying. Like, this is annoying. This is mega annoying for the Protoss. I think Ford of it has to start thinking of another plan to break through. He's gonna have to start thinking of another plan. We have maxed out upgrades here on Gensei. I'm not sure if his air is on 3-3 three, three as well. Yep, 3 carapace, he's no longer researching. He's got max out drop on the top, reavers inbound, just outside of range. And he kills the reavers, but there might still be something in there, they're empty. He killed a couple drones on the gas though, which is still kind of annoying. But Gensei has a lot of gas right now because he's just been building Zerkling, so he can at some point switch to Guardians. Once he has a lot of minerals, a lot of gas, he can just make like 36 Guardians all at the same time, and that might catch Forbade off guard as we speak at this moment in time. Gensei is still in recovery mode because his minerals are very low. His focus at the moment is on keeping those drones alive for long enough. Mother drop there over the bottom, Reaver unloads, Reaver shoots, Reaver kills everything yet again. So even though we were just talking about his economy being completely fine and dandy yet again, nope, it is not. If everything gets killed, because the drop snuck in, kills everything. The front door though, still very well protected. The lurkers on the high one are being a pain, an absolute pain, making it nearly impossible to break through. Like high grounds have 50% mischance. Comes in over the top. If this drop hits, it's over. If this hits, it's over. Great. D webs. The loads on the scene. Drones running to safety. Nope. They're getting chased down. They return and they run away yet again. Templar loads. Templar is pretty. The Templar is in the perfect spot. No lurkers can hit the Templar right there. And I think that four of eight just figured out that this exact spot is a weak spot. He already knows his top side is weak and this side there is weak like right above the hive. But now he knows that right here on the right of the hive, there's another open spot where the lurkers cannot hit what he unloads. So he's slowly starting to figure out where to unload his drops to hit the drones. He's now back to 47 drones. He's recovering yet again. Another drop over the bottom, a single shuttle flies in. Reaver inbound. 
Dragoon. Um, Templar reloads. Templar is too far away to storm all the drones. Hits the Ibelisks instead. Actually kills two drones there on the gas, but he's got so much gas, he doesn't really mind. It's largely because he has so little money, he cannot really afford to build a lot of gas units. He's making some lurkers, but barely, barely making the lurkers. A lot of wave comes in. A lot of drop on the bottom. Rinse and repeat. He has to keep doing this over and over until Gensei at some point eventually breaks. Reeves on low, drones run to safety just on time, Scarab is on the chase, Scarab will it explode? No, it gets blocked by an egg. This egg saves the drones. Like the Scarab cannot pass through units. If it gets stuck behind the unit, or in between units, it will not kill anything. It will just get stuck, and when a timer runs out on the Scarab, it explodes, killing absolutely nothing. The Scarab has to actually physically connect with the target. Another drop there on the bottom. Templar storm. Ooh, that was very close. The Templar started the casting animation, but died just before it finished. Super close call because Gensei is very low on minerals, and he might actually have been unable to recover properly at that point. So what I think Four Five Eight has to do at this point, the frontal pressure on Gensei's base is great, but as we can see, it's not getting the results he needs because Gensei is a master, a master of defense. He's playing this perfectly, perfectly. His, his economic defense is not being as good as it should have been, but the front defense has to be perfection, absolute perfection. Nobody ever plays a frontal defense as well as this. Like, look at this. It's perfection. How do you break this? 4 5 they will have to find another way to break this defense. Gensei is again back on 71 drones. You could say, you could argue that things are getting better for Gensei here. Drop comes in. Drop gets sniped. Another drop goes in on the bottom. This one gets sniped as well. Gensei's economy is starting to grow. He's on max house supply. Things are actually starting to look better for him. And the better things start looking for Gensei, the worse they will look for 458. I think 458 has to try a mass drop of Reavers right here on the bottom corner with some observers, and that might turn the tide. But now we've got Guardians on the way. He took too long to switch to a different approach, a different methodology. Because right now the Guardians in the sky with max up upgrades will easily kill Reavers. He's gonna need some storms, and actually I was wrong. Level two attack on the Guardians, drop over the bottom once again, comes in, gets sniped just on time. Shuttles over the top are empty. And we have a small little break in the action. A small little pause to catch our breath and for me to take a drink. Because I haven't drank anything in 32 minutes of talking non-stop. I need, I need some water. Jesus, I need some water. Okay, it's a drop on the bottom. It's not a big drop, it's two Reavers, six Dragoons, it's not that much, but it might put things into motion. Corsairs are there for the Guardians, Guardians are taking heavy fire, but the Guardians are a little bit too split up to die to these Corsairs. Like, a little bit too split up, Corsairs are great against units that are in very close proximity of one another. And everything is split up just a little bit, the Corsairs lose their damage value quite quickly. So great defense in the front yet again. He doesn't have a lot of spores or something on the sides, but he's starting the construction or the morphing of spores on the bottom side. He might add a bunch more. He might keep adding spores until he feels safe against those drops. Another drop there on the bottom. He's going to unload right in the danger zone. This is, there is a defiler, so Plague might kill this pretty quickly. Unloads, does it have a plague? No, no plague. Reavers shooting everything they can. There's no observer on the scene. Reavers have... Observer arrives. 
Lurkas are in danger. There's a plague. The plague might be a little bit too late. The Lurkas are going down. Cores are pushing the skies against the Guardians. The Guardians are getting protected by the Hiders, but these Guardians will die before the Cores say no. Close call. Close call. Air upgrades are on 132. Ground is on 233. Still not on maxed out armor upgrades. I do not know why 458 does not like his armor upgrades. They are so important in keeping your units alive for longer. It's stronger than shield upgrades. Comes in over the bottom. Once again, unloading on the scene. He has the fighter with Plague. Gonna Plague everything. Beautiful Plague on the bottom corner. Everything will die very quickly with the Plague. But ooh, great storm. Great Reaver shots there. Another great storm. Reaver dies. Arkham morphing. Arkham does not care about the plague. Yeah, he's making slight little bits of progress here because first we had the uh, lurkers here on the bottom, and those two lurkers are dead, which might mean that if a temple unloads right here and storms on the drones, the drones might die. So we have a counter push happening in the front as well, but he managed to stop the counter push. There's two lurkers in the front for him to push through with the dragoons. Dark Swarm at the bottom. This Dark Swarm might actually backfire. No, nope, because for the drop on the drones. Unloading Reavers. Unloaded a Reaver. These other ones are empty. Sadly loses a bunch of shoulders. Spores. Goons in the front not achieving anything. These Lurkers are the absolute MVPs here. Like individually, they have a couple of kills each. Which all amounts up to a lot of kills dropped over the top. There's something in there. Templar does not unload. Nope, no Templar in the mix. Yeah, the Lurkers have been doing their job. They have been doing their job. Okay, high ground, low ground. You can see it for me just running out of ideas. And I th really think he has to just commit to a super big reaver drop somewhere in the base. The only problem is that the filers with Plague are on location to immediately destroy the health bars of those reavers. The game has gone on too long. Too long. And Gensei is defending everything perfectly. Okay, Plague on the shuttles, maybe not the best one, but there's not an... Okay, that drop comes in, drop. Oh, almost, almost managed to unload what matters and storm or hit a reaver shot on the drones. Very close calls everywhere. He might have to try the top side. The top side is not as well protected as the bottom side. But there's vision everywhere, so he could just relocate his unit to the top. Four of eight is having a very difficult time here. Okay, there's gonna be another plague on those dragoons. Or is he gonna save the energy on the defiler? At this point, I'm not sure what Formidate would have to do to break through. Like maybe more Templars? Here in the front, the storm on the lurkers. Maybe a couple more Reavers in those drops, but we have Guardians in the sky. Plague on the Corsairs. The plagues have just been really good. Tries again on the bottom corner. A lot of reavers. These reavers are going to kill those hydralisks. Picks one up. Flies closer. Forces the drones to run away. Reaver's still alive. Drones are not at home. Reaver dies. And now the other one going to die as well. It was a very good attempt. Oh, whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus Christ. So a group of drones just ran into the middle. He forgot to pull one group of drones back to his minerals. And you know what? He still took some economic damage. He's lost 14 drones in total in that exchange. Some of them on the gas and a group of 12 on the middle. I hope he notices that he lost. Yeah, he noticed. He noticed. He built another 12 drones. I'm gonna put them back to work. The front is being defended perfectly. It's a triple swarm defense, drop on the bottom there, does not achieve too much. Yeah, I really think that Forvid is starting to feel like he's not achieving anything. And you know what? He actually is not achieving anything. The defense at some point becomes super, 
super efficient. Once you have some money, some gas, and units all around your base, you got some spores, some sunken, some swarms, upgrades, the fence becomes much easier than earlier into the game. And attacking as a Protoss becomes progressively more difficult. Tries to get in, nope, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. He needs a big Reaver drop, like 12 Reavers somewhere. Just break open a side, you on the top. Kill a lot of hatcheries and hydrolisks, and create an opening for a follow-up drop to hit those drones. Because as the game has gone on, there's fewer and fewer lurkers protecting those drones at the hive. Fewer and fewer lurkers. So the chance of hitting a storm is slowly increasing because the units that you unload next to the hive will survive for just a little bit longer than before. So he has to keep on trying with the rinse and repeat method. But for the past, I'd say, 25 minutes, we have not really seen any movement in either direction. We had a couple moments where Gensei lost a lot of drones, but then after losing all of his drones, he managed to recover time and time again. And Forbe does not manage to make forward progress. So the Guardians have killed units or the cannons on the sides. Also, a lot of cannons in the middle have gone down. There's some openings for Gensei here to go for counterattacks. Drop on the top. Is he gonna find an opening? Is he gonna find an opening? Flies right down through. Hydro just spawned. The loads of Templar. Templar storms, but it missed the storm by like a centimeter. That's lucky. That's lucky for Gensei. Although Gensei does have 12,000 minerals, even if he lost his drones on the minerals, he can rebuild them in five seconds. This is going to be the point in the game where Gensei is going to break free. Forve just lost his entire army, and Gensei is now in a counterattack. He sees his moment to strike, gets a Dark Swarm in the front. Storm happening, they're on the lurkers, but it's not going to kill them. The cannons in the middle are dying, they've fulfill their role for most of the game, but now we can see the pushback. Now we can see the reversal. Gensei goes from the defender to the attacker. And 458, once again, just like at the start of the game, has to play defense. Are the armor upgrades on level 3? Yes, level 3, drop comes in. No drones die, Reavers die too quick, drones stay alive. Gensei is feeling confident, he's feeling himself. He's going in for the attack. Reavers behind the cannons. Corsa is waiting for the time to strike. Corsa is attacking the Guardians, there's no plague coming down there on the Corsa. There's no energy for the plague, he's consumed, burning up the lurkers. Guardians will die there to the Corsairs. Yeah. Because Gensei pushed into the middle, his army thinned out a little bit too much to really push through. But the positive side here is that he managed to set up a, a field of lurkers on the middle, right in front of Forvate base. And now he's cleaning out the side as well. He's taking over control of the map. He's taking over vision. And this is basically the equivalent of cannons on the middle, a field of lurkers. Now the Reavers and the Observers will kill this, without a doubt, without a doubt. I think he might have too many Corsairs though. Great plague there on the Reavers. He's gonna have to throw away some Corsairs. What is Gensei building here though? It's almost all Hydrolisks, he's gonna try to push through with Hydrolisk and Plague. Great plagues, beautiful plagues. Beautiful plagues. Let's go to red versus blue for a little bit. You can appreciate the plagues on the yellow color. Great disruption webs. Is it gonna be enough there though? Is it gonna be enough? The Zerkers are taking all the fire. The Lurkers are staying alive. Disruption web will end within a bit. Huge drop there going in. Actually, is this a huge drop? 
are these shuttles all filled up or is it only some of them this is the one that matters on those reavers drones running to safety scarab is on the chase scarab is blocked scarab cannot chase them down a couple drones did die there on the right side went from about i'd say 61 to 58 so lost three of them which does not matter too much he needs a reaver to kill those lurkers on the side another plate they're coming down there on the dragoon doesn't hit a lot of them the Dark Swarm ends there on the right side, along the rear to push through. Gets a huge surround on the middle. That surround is huge, because it gives him so much surface area to hit those Dragoons from every single direction all around. So yeah, the map has been taken over by Gensei. Vision everywhere. 4 of 8 locked into one small base. A little vision there on the right. Trying to push through the middle, but a dark swarm comes out yet again. Observer is getting pushed back. Weaver is trying to do his job, but can't. Everything dies because of the plague earlier. It just dies too quick after a plague. Plague is absolutely awesome. I'd say plague has the defilers as a whole. The dark swarms, the plagues have carried Gensei throughout the entire game. Tries to go in, unloads. Is there a Weaver? No, no Templar, no Weaver. Drones stay alive yet again. Drones stay alive yet again. You know, the thing is, he at least is trying. Of course, he's gonna have to keep those Guardians alive. We have a Devourer though. Guardians moving backwards. The Guardians being protected by the Hydalisks. Pretty good control there on this play from Gensei. He needs some storms. You really need some storms right now, right here. Pulls back his Reavers. So that the Hylas can no longer protect the Guardian. But we have the Vars in the sky that can easily destroy the Corsair. So the Guardians are pretty forward. The Templars are definitely what he needs. Going to push forward there with the Dragoons and the Reavers. Reavers are killing the ground force, but the Guardians in the sky are too strong. Oh, excuse me. So 458 is getting low on gas. I'm not very low on gas, but he's getting lower on gas than before. Great plague there on the Reavers. So this is one of the hardest parts to do for a Zerg. Breaking through into a Protoss base. It's difficult because all your units die easily. Specifically the Reavers and Storms. Okay, two shuttles there trying to get in, but there's a vision there for Gensei. Gensei has no units in between. He has, he's got to go right now. You got to go right now. Just go for it. Just do it. Ah, he took too long. My, he could see this. He could see that there was nothing on the bottom corner. He took too long. That was his one chance to go in and maybe kill some drones. And he decided to kill the Zerkling first. That was a small little massive mistake that might have just cost him his chance to win the game. His guardians in the skies clouding the darkness on the ground. But that makes no sense. Clouding the skies. Great storms. You can see storms are super awesome against Zerk. Zerk. Everything Zerg has dies to two storms or one storm. Drop comes in. I on the bottom corner. Scarabs are not okay. Scarabs are doing their job. Getting close to Zerg and spawning. He's gonna try to get those drones on the top. Picks them up. Flies in deeper. Unloading on the top. Drones run to safety. Too far away. Drones gonna survive. Kills seven of them. Reaver stays alive for a pretty, pretty long time. Units are on the push. Back here in the choke point. He's surviving with Storm and Reavers. But he killed the cannons. And a couple of Reavers are on... Well, most of the Reavers are on low HP. Five out of seven. Got plagued. Almost dead. Shows in the sky. Fully healthy. He might pick up the Reavers and land them here in the bottom corner. And then try again to kill some drones. He's going to have to kill some drones. Also, Gensei is running out of gas because he keeps losing drones here on the bottom. One single shuttle. Two Reavers. Scourges in between. He cannot see the Scourges. Flies right into it. No, he avoids it. Oh, he avoided it by a little bit. The Lulz 
issues on the dr the wrong drones. You gotta get closer, friend. You gotta get closer. You gotta get closer. Ah, the drones run away just on time. You should have used this one, not the other one. See how the drones stay alive? He's got 42. We killed a bunch of drones on the bottom, so the gas income yet again has been disrupted. Ultralisks. Five there with a great plague on all the Reavers, but most of the Reavers were already plagued to begin with, but it still helps him. He could have... Would have been better to plague on the right side, but he might still consume some units and plague all the Templars and the Dragoons and the Shuttles. He might still do that. That's a lot of High Templars, by the way. 14 High Templars. Maybe more. 15, 16 High Templars. You're in the front. It's gonna be very difficult to break through, or very easy. It's one of those two things. Either it's gonna be very difficult, almost impossible against all those storms, or he's just gonna walk right over all of this, because having this many Templars does mean you don't have a lot of Dragoons. But he has the Reavers, which is great, which is absolutely great. So pushing away the Overlords, getting vision back. Taking away that vision, which should allow the drops to fly in a little bit easier. Picking up some High Templars and an Archon. The Archon is going to take fire away from the High Templars. He flies in and over. One Overlord still in between. This Zerkling saw nothing. Trying to push into the middle there. He's got, no He's got an Observer. Flies in there with the drop. Gensei say no. Flies and unloads. Templar storms all the drones. Kills the drones. Kills all the drones. Down to 16. But we still have 7,000 minerals in the bank for Gensei. But that was a big economic hit. And you're in the middle. 458 is pushing back. The Empire strikes back. This is his one opportunity to flip the game around and still win. But look at this, huge all or drop flying all around. This is where all of Gensei's supply is at. It does mean his front door is quite exposed to this large attack that's coming in right now. But does Forvate have what it takes to defend himself against this huge Overlord drop? We've got the courses, it, the Devourers in the mix to defend the Overlords from cannon fire. But here we got the push in the front. We got the Dark Swarm, so there's Lurkers in between as well. Lurkers against the Green Reavers. Drop comes in at the same time. Four Templars, one Storm. Oh, hits everything yet again. Is the game flipping around? 17 drones. Still has one High Templar somewhere in there. Goes for the drop right on top of the entire economy that 4 of 8 has. Will, <clears throat> will a Defiler unload? He's having trouble unloading his Overlords. Nope, they have... He's having trouble unloading his Overlords. I think they're... They might all be empty. Oh no, that was a disaster. Not what he had in mind. We still have a High Templar in there. Yes, four High Templars. The front door there, though, he's successfully defending. But this... Group of four High Templars still hanging in the back. Drones are returning back to work. This might turn the game around. Four, five, eight... Has managed to... The drones are returning. He's unloading a High Templar. He still has more in there. He's used only one of them. He returns, and as they return, another one unloads. Unloads. Oh, he gets the drones! So oh, how many does he get? Oh, he gets a lot of them. Well, not a lot of them, ten of them. But that's not a high Templar. This one storms as well, and he hits everything. Oh, Gensei is getting tricked in the next week. There's one more high Templar in there. There's one more high Templar in there down to 15 minerals it storms as well oh beautiful beautiful Gensei just keeps on getting tricked and tricked this is why you always make sure to kill the shuttles that are hanging in your base because this might happen another drop comes in this this is gonna be the end is this is the end unloads no nope, they're empty they're empty it's all empty but Gensei is... He's gonna have to keep these. Wait, we'll drop over the top. Temple unloads. Temple does not storm, but is there another one in there? There's another one there, but there's not a load. Super close call. Look at the end of the game. He's at 87 supply. He's holding on for dear life. 
He's got almost no money to withdraw his drones. He's waiting for money to slowly come into the bank to build drones. So he's got 25 drones and two of them are mining gas. The front door is staying alive. Reavers and Templars coming in over the front. Uh, the game flipped around drastically, dramatically. Four of eight didn't give up on the drops, and he finally hit the mother combination of drops with a tricky shuttle with four High Templars still in there. Unloading them one by one, catching Gensei, slipping, unaware. The Reavers are doing God's work. The Dark Swarms do not matter. The Reavers do not care about your Dark Swarms. They love the Dark Swarms. Drop there over the front comes in. Scourge getting the shuttle. The shuttles die, but the army that Fornavate has is marching forward unopposed. Nothing to stop them. The Filer dies. The Filer dies. His most important unit dies. He's making a new one. But the Dark Swarm will end very soon. And when it ends, it's over. Gensei leaves the game, storms his drones again. Stormed the drones again, it's over. 458 was pushed back to his base, back against the ropes. Gensei was feeling mighty, he was feeling on top of the world. But 458 turns it around. He turns it around and manages to get a win. 55 minutes in. Never gave up. Never gave up. Beautiful performance from 4 8 Amazing defense from Gensei for like 50 minutes in a row. His defense was straight up MVP. Until, all of a sudden, it wasn't. And that is when Gensei perished under the sheer weight of 4 5 8s Protoss play. The Reavers, Dragoons, High Templars, the Shoals of Drops, everything combined led to this moment. We'll see you next time with RGB from RGB TV, bringing you one of the longest games I've cast in my life. 55 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you for the next video.